Well, hey everyone, here is another video on the Arturia Keystep, and a lot of you may already have uh, got the email if you own one of these from Arturia announcing a new firmware update for this. And if you're wondering what it's all about, stick around. Okay, so what is the Arturia Keystep firmware update 1.1 all about? Well, according to them, and as you can see on the screen here, it's got new sequence length controls. It's rapidly changing your sequence length with new MIDI channel shortcut controls. It's got a new armed clock behavior, changes the way Keystep responds when it receives incoming clock signals an updated tempo quantizing behavior um, which gives you a new shift functionality and it lets you quickly adjust your tempo quantizing it to one bpm and it also has an updated arpeggiator octave behavior which is something i love so using shift and octave plus and minus in the arpeggiator mode lets you switch between octaves on the fly there's a new randomness option with two modes added pattern and brownian and we'll go through what that means for ultimate creative chaos this is what they're saying great marketing words those and the last thing is they uh, added new midi control center options as well so we can change the led brightness we can control all the new features with ease so there we have it so how do we update it well i haven't updated mine yet so let's go in and check out my desktop here i've got the archuria plugged in to the computer i'm using windows in this particular but normally i use mac but i thought let's use windows okay so here we go we've got the midi control center it's working that looks pretty good it can see the key step up here yep and it's showing firmware revision 1.01 currently and it says update available 1.1.0 so basically what we have to do is basically click the revision that and click on download latest hopefully that's it's thinking here we go download successful entering the firmware upgrade mode i'm using one of those uh, serious voices please unplug your device and then plug it back in again and then click ok all right so let's do that Let's unplug it. Okay. Happen to unplug and then plug it back in again. Okay. And just to give you an idea of what it's doing, it's doing this little dancey thing here. <laughs> you can see just down below this hold shift octave and minus and plus lights are going dancey dancey all right so let's click ok and let's upgrade the firmware dum, 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 dum. insert some really stupid music okay burn complete so it says the process is completed without error. That's really, really cool. I'm happy with that. You guys can see that now. There we go. Boom. And yay, it shows now that we are on 1.1.0. Oh, yeah, that's really cool. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to check out the new Brownian motion, which is the, ra the new random feature in the arpeggiator. And I'm going to kind of explain to you what it is and how it works and i'm probably gonna really do a bad job of it so yeah let's give it a crack anyway so first we need to go into the uh, you know the midi control center here and we need to change the arp random to brownian here done cool next thing we need to do is doo -doo 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 -doo, turn that off turn our synth on to arp and switch this mode to random which is yeah that's on random which is position number five 
Okay, now I've got this set up as a polyphonic, but we can turn this on. Right, so we can do this. Right, so basically from what I can understand Brownian mode is, when it play, it still plays the arpeggio randomly, but after each step, the pattern will play, it will move to the next step, a 50% chance. It'll move to the previous step, a 25% chance, and it will repeat the current step, another 25% chance. So, you know, basically it's kind of more chance based as opposed to pure randomness. So let's listen to the difference. I'm just going to do a straight C, E and G and we'll see. Right, now I'm going to change it back to pattern based. So it's kind of more chaotic and random. Let's change it back to Brownian again. So for me, it's probably slightly more musical and less random, if that makes sense. So there, there is the um, arpeggiator Brownian mode. Let's do it with a few more. updated arpeggiator octave behavior using the shift and octave plus and minus in the arpeggiator mode lets you switch octaves on the fly all right so let's see how we go with that let's go to an up sorry to an up mode all right That just lets us change octaves like that. What we're going to do now is we're going to check out the way the new sequence feature works and basically it it works on base adding mathematics that sort of stuff so bear with me but it's pretty easy. So basically if we hold down record we can actually set the sequence length based on these numbers across here from 1 to 16 so that's the MIDI channel numbers but when you're holding down record it doesn't affect the MIDI channel so don't worry. And what we can do is we can just hold down record and hit one of these numbers and that's how long the sequence length is. But also, if you do it a second and a third time, it appends the number that you've added it to. So I'll give you an example. So let's say we wanted to do a 24 length sequence. We hold down record, press 16, and then press 8. And now we've got a 24 length sequence and that's it so then we record our sequence in okay let's try that now So that's basically it. Now, the other thing you can do is um, you can actually change the length of the sequence on the fly whilst you're playing it. And so let's show you how that works. You hold down record. And let's just do a four. Let's just do one. Eight. 
Okay, so that is how you change the length of the sequence as you're playing it. One thing to notice though is while you are changing the length of the sequence as you're playing it, if you hold down record, it won't actually change it to that number until you let go. So let's try that. So you can you can actually time it a bit better. It's more playable. So let's try that. So we've got it to 16. It's still 8. Now. So there you go. That's how the new sequence feature works on the key step firmware 1.1 okay so let's just check out this part here which is the new feature on the um, tempo side of things so what we've got is uh, the Archeria key step is set to the internal clock using the dip switches at the back and I've just got that going MIDI out to MIDI in on my um, MIDI bro which is MIDI power basically um, now I'm running a special firmware on here which is called MIDI clock and I'll put a link in the description below if you've got a MIDI Power, MIDI Bro, MIDI Gale, MIDI Sizer, or any, any of those type, uh, you know, same firmware that takes the MIDI Power firmware. So what this is doing is this is showing me the current clock, right? If I adjust the clock here, press play, you'll see that's the current clock. It's reasonably quick to update. So if I let go, you should stabilize. Okay, and it's flickering between 121.4, so you can see that the percentage underneath the MIDI clock rate is actually the uh, drift rate, so it's 0.187%, which is pretty small, so that's actually a pretty stable clock. So the new feature of the key step is when you hold down shift and you adjust the clock to that central position, which is there, it should now... If I turn it clockwise, it should increase in increments of 1 BPM. Just let it... So that was kind of... Let's go to there. Just give it a sec. you got to give it a sec to update. But you can see that is actually... This is the first time I've ever checked this, by the way. That's actually spot on. That's accurate as anything. So that's how you can get your clock to exactly 127.0. If I didn't hold down a shift, and I'm just adjusting this, say I wanted to get 127.0, it's gonna be very fidgety. So what you do is you get to approximately the clock speed you want. Say I want, let's say I want 90. All right, so we go down to 90, as close as we can to 90. Okay, and and you can see I can't quite get 90. There's 89. 90.2. See, that's as close as I'm going to get to 90. But what if I want exactly 90? So what I do is I hold down shift and I bring that right up to the top position. And that should give me 90. Let go of shift. There you go. So that's that feature. So going all the way to the left, it'll increment in 1 BPM steps to minus 10 and all the way to the right plus 10 so let's show you how that works shift that you go to 80. Let go. there you go there's 80 and then shift all the way to the right should get us to 100 beautiful with 0.15 percent 0.16 percent yeah it's really accurate stable clock now so this is a pretty accurate um, measurement tool to see how good a clock is. You can actually use these as a stable clock as well. And a lot of people in the modular world swear by this particular algorithm. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is the new Tempo um, BPM feature. So yeah, thumbs up for that, that's good. Let's have a look at this new arm clock behavior. So in here, you've got this arm to start feature. You can actually turn it on and off, okay? What that actually means is it determines the start-stop behavior of the sequencer when you're working with an external clock source. 
So for example, if you've got uh, a clock source that sends a start stop message, but you don't want the key step to start automatically, you would turn that off. So we've done the randomness. And okay, so the last thing to look at would be this new LED brightness setting down here. And at the moment it's set to 100, which is actually pretty bright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, set this to, so just below, I've got another version of that uh, MIDI control center below me and you can see um, where's my mouse going? You can see my mouse there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the bigger window because we need to watch, we want to watch this LED brightness and I might actually turn this light off here too. It's going to make things really dark. The camera is going to look very grainy. But let's just have a look at this LED. And so that's really, really dull. And that's is really really bright so where are we so that's about 50 there that's 50 so if the light makes any difference for you guys that's 50 100 and 10 and 10 is very very barely visible at all that's a good nighttime mode I actually don't mind that a little bit duller. So I'm gonna put it to about maybe 50. There we go. So that's the new LED brightness feature. That's it. Cool. So new randomness feature of the arpeggiator, new optives, new sequence length mode, new arming of the starting and stopping. Alright guys, well thanks for watching the video on the new firmware 1.1 of the Arturia Keystep. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment below if you want to ask any questions about it. And uh, stay tuned for more videos. Don't forget the live stream. Catch you later.